sort of building pattern. That's his 50 food army. He has picked up the uh, orb of uh, oh, sorry orb of corruption. That is an important, uh, extremely important part of of undead play. He has one attack upgrade, and he has just the one statue. I'm sort of you know reiterating things that you can see yourselves, but these are important enough things that they do bear actually vocalizing. Orb of corruption extremely important. Uh, apparently, he's able to afford one. Um, one attack upgrade. Notice that he also only he has gotten three ghouls. Now I didn't look for when the exact time he picked up that third ghoul was. I do recommend you watch the replay and find out uh, part of this build order. Space is definitely one of those top tier undeads where you can you can feel safe and perfectly emulating him and probably doing the right thing. So I do somewhat recommend just blindly copying that build order because the build order is, is pretty stagnant. There's nothing really special that goes on in there. Uh, he basically intended every single every wow every single one of his choices, um, yeah. So let's see. He is now uh, starting his first frost storm, of course, and that will get him at 50 food because he will have that shade going on. He doesn't have it yet, but I believe he will get it soon. I don't know why he actually hasn't produced it yet. He has money for it and all that kind of stuff. I really don't know why he doesn't have the shade just yet, but he will get one. Uh, I'm pretty confident in that. I could be wrong. But I do remember watching the replay maybe 12 minutes ago, and he in fact had a shade. Again, I just don't know why he's not making it yet. There's the Acolyte. Good job, buddy. Super late, but at least you made it. Uh, I also believe that he could afford a second attack upgrade. Now, again, he's a better undead player than me, so he knows better. But I'm just not quite sure why he's not making the second attack upgrade. Just that uh, he apparently isn't, so I'm pointing out things that he's doing that I wouldn't. And he's better than me, so there's a difference. Uh, but he's not getting the second attack upgrade. I My theory is that he probably wants to afford items more. Although he hasn't picked up a town portal from the shop or anything, so I'm slightly confused as to his production decisions. Because he's stacking up a lot of gold and not doing anything with it. Uh, there is, of course, merit in gold stacking in and of itself at 50 food, and that's fine. Um, he f Notice that he right away frost armors his lich and the frost worm, the two main targets that are usually focused down. Usually people don't go for a death knight that has a post of vulnerability because you're not gonna kill that. Pure and simple. And here he goes, just getting some more skeletons along the way. And I guess he will pick up an item here. He really? You picked up claws of attack for your lich? Alright, sure. Okay. Uh, do what you want. He also has five more food here. I guess he's making... I, I really don't... Oh, yeah, he picked up a Dark Ranger. Sorry, I'm completely bad at this game. He picked up a Dark Ranger. That was his, the rest of his food right there. And, of course, one really nice thing he did here was with the Frost Storm and all the damage I put, when a Blade Master shows up, you can do a lot of damage to him. And that's actually going to do a lot for him in this battle, as you're going to see here. And he goes for the Kodo first. And, yes, there are two Kodos, so he says, okay, screw that. Let's go for the Torrent Chieftain instead. This is one of the primary important targets that are... Uh, that really stick out. I don't know why he's not finishing off. Oh, that was a cute and vulnerability potion. But hey, look, a blade master. Rar death coil or not? Um, he could have killed it, but okay. Uh, Frostworm still goes down, but he's able to just do so much damage on Fogus. I mean, he's, he keeps switching targets really stupidly, and I find that really uh, funny. But he is able to easily pick off heroes when you have a Frostworm with that much slowing. You can really easily pick off heroes, and you get to see how fast these Kodos die. And there's a blade master again, very low. That is is of course killable. And it's just, he has so much damage output, it really doesn't matter. That Who needed more Berserkers who didn't have them? Um, and I believe he really could have used Spirit Link and didn't have that either. And also, additionally past that, I think he really also needed uh, Chain Heal. I think he really needed a Shadow Hunter and not War Stomp. I don't think War Stomp really meshes with this army combination very much. Uh, because it's not really unit centric. It, it, you've got some flying units, you've got some air, you've got some ground, you've got hero focus, you've got all sorts of different things going on. It's not just a bunch of crypt feeds. So I feel like whose production is a little bit, a little bit poor. But you just see just how much damage up he has. He again chases down the blade master. He's able to kill off a berserker in just a couple of volleys, and he keeps switching units, which I just find so ironic that he sort of goes for one unit and then goes for something completely different, and then switches back and forth, and he keeps a lot of red units in the battle, which is just sort of strange from space. I feel like he missed micro that a bit. Uh, and just all sorts of different points during the battle where he would, he focused the Torrent very, very low, and then when he ran out of potions and had 400 points, he just stopped going for him. And then he got the Blade Master very low, and then he was coil pull and didn't go for him. And just a lot of things like that happened. I feel like Space microed that battle poorly, but his playstyle was very, very intelligent, right? He, he sort of, he had all sorts of little cute things that went on, like for example, creep jacking his opponent at the marketplace and getting the vision and, 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 and managing to get that creep kill, which is very nice. He had a pretty decent creep jack at the bottom right, 
as he's sort of just patrolled along the map looking for his opponent and doing a pretty good job of finding him, of course. Uh, he did a really cute thing there with the uh, the skeleton saw the the blade master in the grunts. So then he hid in the corner and tried to creep jack him. Just he, you know, he's clearly a very intelligent player that he he has a good understanding of what people will do and and, and what uh, he sort of needs to do to, to win the game. But I feel like he he microed poorly that last battle just because he kept splitting focus, and that's really not what you want to do. Typically, an orc army is going to be big enough that they can overrun you. And I'm actually surprised that the orc army wasn't a little bit bigger than that. That he just wasn't able to do any damage there. Uh, I guess maybe he just didn't have very good harass because Space played rather safely, actually. He didn't creep very hard. Most of his experience gain was in the beginning where Who wasn't actually creep jacking him, but I feel like that might have been a mistake on Who's part. He's not creep jacking as much as he could have uh, instead of trying to creep up his own army. But certainly... <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> certainly his production was, was very solid. His unit choices were very good. And uh, he just simply managed to. Uh, he certainly one one of the key factors though was actually forcing that blade master out of the battle uh, as he went for the big attack. The blade master ran past the shade, got extremely nuked, uh, just just super hard, uh, which was just all kinds of important, of course, to, to nuke that blade master that low because the blade master is no longer part of the army now. Um, and, and honestly, in any given situation, if you're not against a uh, a, a spirit link shadow hunter player, and of course that is rare. Of course, uh, who was, was unique in going Torn Chief and not getting Link. But uh, when you're when you're not against Link and a Shadow Hunter, you can always get rid of the Blade Master. You can always do it. Just just every single time you want to go for that Blade and get rid of him, because he actually dies very quickly when you have Orb of Corruption, and your nukes still work pretty well. He actually has less hit points purely than a Grunt, for example, or the Torn Chief and things like that. So you actually can nuke him down fairly quickly. And the Dark Ranger for Silence, of course, is is always cute, and I don't think he actually silenced anything that I remember that battle, but uh, it certainly is worthwhile picking up for those clutch silences for when you want to pick off that Blade Master. Oh no, you can't wind walk, or oh no, you can't uh, you can't chain heal him or anything like that. So it is it is a worthwhile pickup. So there there's some important things there, um, and yeah, I believe that uh, more or less ex explains the matchup. I know there's not a lot of super crazy information there, but uh, that is what the audio is about, and uh, hopefully we'll do another one shortly if there are some good replays out and try to explore the match a little bit more, but really the main point is just, just to iron these out for you guys that are still listening. Fiend build, block off your stuff, get your shop in the back, uh, a pretty, uh, a sort of mixed aggressive early game where he managed to creep jack his opponent and then get a good amount of creeping done at the same time, a uh, good little split there with the, with the, bl with the Death Knight harassing while his crit feeds were creeping on the other side of the map, and then sort of grouping up and going down to the other side. So little things going on there, creeping the right-hand side goblin merchant, uh, sorry, mercenary camp was was extremely important. There was a lot of experience and good items that, that he really needed there. And then just going fast tier 3, vital, vital, vital. The third ghoul, extremely important there for actually getting the tier 3 started, and getting the lich and getting his, his slaughterhouse started. You really do need three ghouls there to make your build order work at all, if you ever want to get tier 3 on your own. Um... And then past that, yeah, there, there's just attack with your first frost orb was just the basic strategy he used. Attack with a frost orb, frost armor, everything up. Grab a dark ranger. He also brought his ghouls, which just again is is just part of an all-in attack. And it's really how undead plays his matchup is they sort of just all in right at that frost orb because they don't want to have to deal with a, a further stacked blade master with the coda or and a lot of berserkers. Now he managed to fight only a few of them, and I think that that was very helpful. And that his uh, his froster managed to be in the battle for a while, and then once it did die, he actually managed to have done so much damage already that his army was better. And again, so much of it was was forcing that blade master out was was being not against the link and chain heal. That really was extremely important. That that who was really not prepared for that fight, and that that's somewhat surprising to me for a top level player to not be ready for that kind of a fight. You you sort of have to know what the end of strategies are going to be. And th those don't seem incredibly difficult to read, but uh, suffice it to say, F Space played a good game. Some missed micro, but the production is absolutely something you can emulate. Uh, if you are against Spirit Link and Chain Heal, of course, it does make things a little bit more difficult. Maybe you need Destroyers. I, I'm not quite certain. I will try to find more games, and my next audio will hopefully be just a, a different uh, game of this matchup, and I can explain that further. But I hope you guys enjoyed listening. I hope you learned something. If you would like training, uh, you want to pay for it. Uh, because I'm that much of a whore, uh, feel free to PM me on the site or email me freakwr at gmail.com. Peace, homies. <laughs>